good morning everybody we are expecting our director to come within few minutes so please hold on maybe another two or three minutes he'll be here thank you i request you all to keep your mobile phones in switched off or silent mode till during the event thank you
I now request our director, Professor Kamakoti, Dean ICSR, Professor Manu Santhanam, Dean ACR, Professor Mahesh, HOD, Professor Nalarasu, and Professor Sanasiraj and Professor Mulli to occupy the stage. Uh, the program will start with an invocation, Tamil Thai Valtu and Vande Mataram. Uh, the audience is requested to stand for the invocation and remain standing till it's over. Nirarum kadaludutta nilamadandai kediludugum Sirarum vadana mena tigal parada ganda midil Dekkanamum madhi siranda dravidanal tirnaadum Thakka siru pirai nudalum daritanarum tilagamume Hattilaga vasanai polanai tulagum minba mura Yeti sayum pugal manakka iranda perum tamilanange Tamilanange Unsi rilamai tiram viyandu sayal marandu Vartu dume Vartu dume Vartu dume Vande madaram Vande madaram Sunde madaram Vande madaram Suchala Sufala Thank you everybody. Uh, so now I now request Professor Sanasiraj to deliver the welcome address. Very good morning to all. Welcome to Ocean Engineering edition of ICSR 50th year celebration. Our institute, IIT Madras, always pioneers in the research and industry collaboration since its in inception. Late born ocean engineering in 1982 had immediately merged with industry involvement with more than consultancy by hands on with them till the end of the execution. Most of the challenges in ocean engineering evolves during implementation too. This is possible with our forefathers who readily accepted to visit their built home with every brick today. I welcome Professor Ravindran, Professor V.S. Raju, Professor Kanamadhi Chetiyar, Professor Narsim Rao, Professor Minak Shuntram, Professor Edi Chandi, and Professor S.P. Supramaniam, Professor Natarajan, Professor Vendran, Professor Surendran, Professor Bhattacharya, and Professor Krishna Kuti, all of them today to this celebration. In fact, OE growth has been consistently reaching high, new highs every year with strong foundations by our super seniors and middle level by our seniors. And now I can proudly say, indirectly or indirectly, our OE hand touch in every marine project in India. Our director, Professor Kamakodi, has clear vision on improving our institute's core function of teaching and research, hands-on with direct in industry interaction, rather than just complementing it. Amidst many pressing demand of time, his presence here reflects this importance. Welcome, sir. I welcome Professor Manusundanam, Dean of ICSR. He continues to play the crucial role of enhancing the research and industry activities with various reforms, which I can proudly say OE has a strong say on it. And I welcome Professor Magesh Panjagula, Dean Alumni Relation, who is here to announce new crowns to OE. Welcome, sir. OE, we invite to our industry colleagues. They are readily accepted to come for today's celebration. I welcome all of them present here, specifically, Mr. Karnanidhi, 
IOT, ONGC, Mr. Kumarasan, Sanmark and Plus, Dr. Chandramogan, Indomer, Coastal Hydraulics, Sri DK Pandi, I think he'll join soon, Deputy, um, Deputy Chief Engineer, uh, LHW, Sri Kaushik Nandi, ITD Simitation, Sri AK Mixra, Me Mehra, Deputy Chairman Haldiata Complex, Sri Sanjay Kumar, Kamarajar Port, Captain Praveen Kumar Singh, VOC Port, Sri Rageesh Kundya, ISDPL, Sri Dijo C. Matthew, Heavy Civil Infrastructure, LNT. I cordially welcome all of you, and I cordially also welcome our own team, faculty colleagues, and staff of OE, family, research scholars, and project staff to this ICSR 50th celebration. Looking forward to a good interaction day. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sanasaraj, for welcoming the guests to the, for the ICSR 50th year event. I now request our HOD, Professor Nalayrasu, to hand over a bouquet to Professor V. Kamakoti. I now request Professor Sanasiraj to hand over a bouquet to Professor Mahesh Panchagula. They did not? Okay. Okay. Okay, fine. So, I now request Professor Manu Santanam uh, to address the gathering on the occasion of ICR 50th year celebrations. Very good morning to one and all. It's indeed a pleasure to see such a packed hall and that of course uh, is because of the kind of work that our ocean engineering dep department does. Uh, it's uh, very well known all across the country. The faculty of ocean engineering are sought after by many industries, many defense uh, and other infrastructure uh, organizations all across the country. And that's the key reason of the success of this department. Now ICSR, is uh, the, cent uh, the Office of Industrial Consulting and Sponsored Research. Uh, our job here is to ensure that all faculty can do what they know best in terms of the technical expertise. And we provide end-to-end -end support and managing projects, all kinds of projects, whether it be industry projects or sponsored projects from the government and so on. So uh, here, I just wanted to give a brief glimpse as to how industry can interact more with IIT Madras through the offices of ICNSR. We are here to facilitate all these interactions and to ensure that the industry academia contribution at IITM keeps growing from strength to strength. So, of course, uh, our faculty here work on several different kinds of projects. Uh, the first one, obviously, is the basic uh, fundamental science-based projects which lead to publications and patents. We also lead to, uh, we uh, take pride in actually doing a lot more uh, translational research uh, which are in major global, globally challenging areas, for instance, manufacturing, construction, infrastructure, telecommunications, space, defense, environment, and water. And also transformational research where we like to take on projects that have direct impact on the society. And these are in various sectors, housing, water, healthcare, education, energy. Just to give you a glimpse from last year, uh, we have uh, more than 1,500 projects ongoing with uh, more than 600 Indian clients and uh, more than 80 foreign clients. We've been also filing annually close to 200 IPs or more. It's a number that is steadily growing and we expect that to grow further as more and more of our students and faculty uh, innovators come forward for patenting. 
there are various modes of engagement uh, for industry. Uh, for those of you in the industry, we have a fairly flex flexible system in which uh, industry can engage. One is industrial consultancy, which involves providing off-the-shelf solutions, essentially relying on the expertise that is already available, sometimes laboratory facilities that are already available at IIT Madras, where short-term problem solving can be done for real-life projects on the field. I'm sure that in ocean engineering, this takes up a lot of uh, engagements because the real expertise is available here to tackle most of the problems associated with our ports and infra infrastructure related to ocean engineering. Then we have the longer term assignments, which are called research-based industrial projects. Here, we uh, try to look at problems that are challenging both from an academic and industry perspective, and the idea is to come up with joint IP uh, with the industry, which can be then taken forward into much larger scale applications uh, and something that also helps in the growth of our research programs uh, along with the solution to, to the industry's problems. Uh, sometimes industry engages with IIT and faculty to just uh, uh, pick on their brains, so as to say, uh, essentially on an advisory basis without really utilizing any of the laboratory facilities. Uh, this is called retainer consulting mode. Uh, CSR is a large means of engagement. Uh, Professor Mahesh will also uh, briefly talk about it later in terms of how industry can actually give part of their CSR funding towards research, uh, primarily in areas that are of direct impact to the country. Several industries have also come forward to set up research centers, state-of-the-art facilities, and so on. Uh, there's also endowed chairs, and of course today uh, it's a chair, uh, chair announcement will be made by Professor Mahesh, but this is more of a, a chair directly uh, in the honor of a uh, couple of our faculty from Ocean Engineering. Now, in terms of uh, IITM, of course, industry-funded en uh, engagements or industry-funded projects are taken on par with sponsored projects in IIT Madras. We discourage routine work. We, uh, we expect our faculty to really turn up with more challenging assignments, and that's what they end up doing most of the time. Um, we, as I said, ICSR provides administrative support under one roof, not just for managing the projects in terms of finances, but also for recruitment, for uh, IP filing, and all of the other activities that may be concerned with the entire project. And, of course, there's also incentive for salary uh, uh, enhancement for faculty members when they take up these projects and so on. Uh, in terms of industry engagements, we've been steadily growing. Uh, actually, last financial year, we had crossed nearly 300 crores in sanctions, about 250 crores were received. And uh, this year, we've, uh, I'm happy to inform you that until February itself, we have actually crossed the 400 crore mark in terms of industry engagement. So that shows the uh, steady rise in the extent of in industry involvement and uh, the collaboration between IITM and industry. Uh, we have had several projects which have made uh, impact on both national and international scales. So uh, you can see the current examples uh, from the last few years. And industry engagement has also led to the creation of several centers of excellence of the campus that deals with uh, global challenges that are facing the world today. You can see some examples here of the already established centers and some more examples of the new centers that have been created on campus. Uh, there's also the Institute of Eminence Research Initiatives that uh, led to the creation of several different uh, research centers on campus. Uh, there were 70 projects identified in the first phase, out of which there were 15 selected for centers of excellence. So very soon you'll actually start seeing the larger impact that these centers actually have, not just on research that is fundamental, but also research that is translational and transformational. Uh, in terms of intellectual property filings, again, this is uh, a segment we've been growing year on year. Uh, we have uh, been filing more than 250 uh, overall uh, pa patents and trademarks and copyrights and so on. But in terms of patents itself, we've been crossing more than 200 easily uh, for the last few years. And this is something which we expect to grow further. Uh, again, faculty at IIT Madras get the benefit of full funding for the Indian patenting. And there's a large share of support also monetarily that is provided for uh, funding e externally abroad. Uh, and then again, of course, there are several initiatives for pre-incubation at IIT Madras. For students especially, this is very important because they can come up with their ideas and uh, make sure that they are fully funded while they are engaging in these ideas while they are on campus. There is also the incubation cell that is set up at Research Park that can actually further help people who have uh, new startups 
and uh, provide them with necessary support in terms of not just financial support but also uh, 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 advice uh, from the leading industrialists. And uh, the IP cell that we have here in I ICSR actually does the complete management uh, of the uh, patents. We have, a, uh, we have a panel of attorneys which help us draft these uh, uh, patents and ensure that we uh, have almost 100% success rate in all the patents that are filed. Uh, we do IP maintenance completely from end to end and also provide uh, a legal cell within I ICSR that helps uh, to vet all the agreements uh, that we have not just related to uh, projects, but also related to IP licensing. Uh, we've been identified for the kind of contributions we've been making in IP. Uh, I mean, it adds to, of course, the fact that IITM is NIRF number one for many years now. And we have also been uh, uh, lauded for our uh, achievements in IP through the Area uh, Award and also the uh, National Intellectual Property Awards in 2021 and 22, and uh, currently the CII Industry Award also. Uh, IP, of course, we have all the necessary tools available to really go forward in filing IPs and also uh, IP management tools that are available. We have a very active technology transfer office also. We've been trying to uh, uh, engage with industry directly as one of the major objectives of this interaction that we are having with the industry is also to look at how we can further license many of the IPs that have been generated, not just from industry collaborations, but also from our internal research projects that have been undertaken by the faculty members. So you'll actually see some of these being displayed and some ideas being uh, propagated through the posters that have been put up in the exhibition hall. Uh, as I said, we have a legal cell that takes care of all different types of engagements, agreements with uh, industry and licensing and so on. Just some examples of uh, different types of agreements that we look at. Uh, the cumulative earnings from our technology transfer process have been increasing steadily. Uh, we expect that this is going to be a major area of growth in the future as we identify more and more avenues for commercialization of existing technologies. Uh, we create IP awareness uh, programs. Uh, those of you who are interested among the students and faculty here, uh, we could curate a specific program for you to really take forward your uh, ideas and innovations. And as I said, IITM offers a very good entrepreneurship ecosystem. We have a pre-incubation support through Center for Innovation, Gopal Krishna Deshpande Center, and also Nirman. And uh, as I said, in uh, the research park, we have the IITM incubation cell, uh, which has specific incubators also for healthcare technologies and for uh, uh, bio uh, technologies and so on. Uh, as you can see from here, the number of uh, uh, incubation cell companies from IIT Madras have been growing steadily, especially in the areas of uh, manufacturing, EV, robotics, uh, AI, ML, and so on. Uh, but what is interesting to also note from here is that many of the companies that have been set up in the incubation cell are not just IITM companies. They are open to any innovator from anywhere in the country to come and set up uh, and uh, start interacting a lot more closely with IIT Madras. Uh, Research Park, of course, is a unique opportunity for a lot of industries to set up their offices and have a closer interaction with faculty at IIT Madras. We have had uh, leading industries from across the world setting up their uh, offices and some even setting up their complete R&D uh, initiatives at the Research Park. So again, those of you who are interested in Research Park should also engage uh, and uh, go in a visit uh, to the Research Park and see the kind of facilities that are on offer. Uh, so it's a very prime retail space or, uh, sorry, re real estate space for you to set up your offices. And uh, that also gives you a clear uh, means of engagement with faculty at IIT Madras. So thank you all very much. We are uh, uh, happy to connect with you anytime. If you have any questions about ICSR and how we can actually help and connect you to the right people with the right expertise in the campus, we are happy to do so. So uh, this is the building where, of course, our offices are located. You're here in ICSR, and I welcome you all once again uh, to this uh, 50th year celebration of both ICSR and ocean engineering. It's a unique opportunity, uh, and I'm very happy that Professor Nalay also uh, took this uh, uh, a chance to make it a grand event calling the stalwarts who have set up our uh, ocean engineering department. Uh, I'm from a sister department, the civil engineering department, uh, from where, of course, uh, ocean engineering also started. So I'm very happy to be uh, part of uh, the same culture at IIT Madras. And uh, I'm, I welcome again all our uh, 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 previous professors who have guided this department on the path of success. And I see this growing more and more with uh, really uh, 
capable hands taking over this department and uh, taking it to the next level. Thank you all very much and welcome once again. Thank you, Professor Manu Santanam for briefing about the ICSR activities. I can proudly say that our ICSR is one of the most flexible things that I've ever come across. That if you go with the problem, it gets just solved. So I now request uh, Professor V. Kamakoti, our director, to deliver the inaugural address. A very, very good morning to all of you and welcome to IIT Madras campus again. Uh, very blessed to see all the great professors who scripted the history of uh, the naval uh, architecture, then the ocean engineering department of IIT Madras. Thank you all, sir, for coming and gracing this occasion and blessing all of us. Um, friends, uh, the, there's only one country in the world, to the best of my knowledge, which is named uh, after uh, a version which is named after a country, that's Indian version. And when uh, we just look at the type of work our ocean engineering department has done over the uh, last uh, five decades now, uh, I'm, I'll not be wrong if we can name it as IITM Ocean, Indian Institute of Technology, Madras Ocean. <laughs> so uh, this is the uh, confidence that the department has earned among all the uh, port management that we see. Um, I, had, I had an opportunity to meet many of the uh, officials uh, and engineers and also the administration uh, from these ports uh, coming to IIT and also meeting at several other meetings. And everyone invariably says that they are very confident if one professor f uh, or, uh, or the team from IIT Madras could take up a project and certify for its stability, etc. So uh, hearty congratulations to the entire ocean engineering department and all the professors here for actually putting this up uh, and giving a great credit to IIT Madras. Needless to say, uh, the petroleum engineering course, uh, uh, which is offered by the department, is one of the top of all the IIT courses, uh, and it is in the top 20 this year in the QS ranking, and I'm sure we will reach, as per our strategic plan, we need to have uh, at least 10% of our courses, 10% uh, of our departments reach the top 50 in the next uh, five years, and I'm sure already we are, uh, uh, we are uh, two, I think, two of them have reached the top 50 this year. Um, as an institute, we are uh, having a very big stress on entrepreneurship and innovation. Uh, we are seeing growing interest, uh, specifically in the energy uh, area, where I feel that offshore uh, windmills uh, will play an extremely important role as India marches towards a, a carbon net zero uh, in the uh, next five to seven years. Um, I have full confidence that IIT Madras will play a very important role in trying to tap the wind energy, offshore wind energy, and that will be a big project and I'm, I'm, I, I'm sure that we will, lit, uh, we will play a very crucial role in getting this to reality. The other important area where we are looking at, uh, where we see that the ocean engineering department uh, is going to see a very uh, nice breakthrough is on the uh, sea launch. Uh, as IIT Madras, we have a couple of startups who are working uh, in the area of uh, uh, rockets, specifically, uh, low earth orbit ro rockets, and this requires rapid launch facilities, and uh, sea launch is becoming a very important aspect. And when we look at sea launch, there are a lot of structures, oceans, offshore structures that need to be constructed, and I'm sure the expertise uh, which the ocean engineering department as, in whole, as a whole has developed, I'm sure that's going to be a very important, uh, significant contribution. Um, we are uh, uh, laying a lot of stress uh, uh, on the uh, on development of indigenous Atmanirbhar technology. Uh, the role of 5G, IIT Madras uh, played a very important role in getting the 5G I standard, uh, which is uh, the first uh, in several uh, decades, or first of its kind, uh, standard essential patent that has gone into the International Telecommunication Union, the ITU. And this will be part of the release 17 of the 5G. 
the role of 5G specifically in port automation is going to be extremely important. And I'm sure that, that is also one path where uh, all our uh, contacts that we have specifically in uh, ports will play a very important role in taking the 5G technology and bringing very effective, efficient use cases. It can be on port automation, there are a lot of robotics that are going to come up, uh, but not only on port automation, it is also, uh, uh, it is also on structural health monitoring of offshore structures where uh, 5G will play a very important role. Um, needless to tell, um, we will be strengthening as much as possible uh, on the curriculum and try to offer more and more uh, very effective courses. Uh, one of the things that we have done over the last decade is to release around 40% of our credits as open credits, uh, so people can take electives, uh, which, is, uh, which is not necessarily from the core uh, department, and that is paying very good dividends now. And I also look forward to see many more uh, dual degree programs coming up uh, from, the, uh, from the ocean engineering department. It will be an interdisciplinary dual degree where students from different disciplines like mechanical or electrical or uh, civil can basically take up a ocean engineering degree. And I think that combination is going to create engineers and scientists uh, who can tackle some of the highly interdisciplinary uh, uh, field of uh, ocean engineering today. And uh, I'm sure we have a great uh, future ahead and uh, ocean engineering at 100, which will coincide with ICSR 100. I think we'll have very, very big stories to tell. Again, I take this opportunity to thank all the elders who have come here and uh, bless, the, bless us all today. And I wish all success to the ocean engineering department in the years to come. Thank you very much. Thank you, our director, for the inspiring address. And I now request Professor Nalayrasu to speak on our Ocean Engineering Department scientific contributions towards the nation. Good morning. Professor Kamakodi, our director. Professor Manu Santanam, Dean ICSR, Professor Mahesh, Dean ACR, my teachers, the founding pillars of our department, my dear colleagues and their family, research scholars and other visitors from industry, industry partners. I would like to thank you for coming for this particular event where it coincided with our uh, celebration for 50th year uh, of ICSR formation. Of course, uh, the coincidence of the same event is about four and, four and a half decades of formation of our ocean engineering department. I have three reasons to celebrate today. You know, the first one uh, being the 50th year of ICSR, the contribution of our ocean engineering department to the ICSR and the institute, uh, which has played a vital role from the starting. The second, I, have, I am very much privileged to talk in front of my teachers, the founding pillars of our department, to say about what they have done, what we are doing and what we are going to do is something that I am really happy about. And the third, we have an opportunity to honor two of our teachers uh, to, to form a chair in, in their name. These three things combined together, I am so happy that this function is so important for us to celebrate. While doing so, I'm just going to present, uh, you know, the contributions that we have done, uh, not in elaborate details, but just a glimpses, I will say, because uh, time is very much essential to complete the program within the time frame. But of course, the contributions that we have done over the four and a half, five decades is all displayed uh, in digital screen, as well as in the, the display, the exhibition hall, which will be opened by the director a little later on. So I'm just going to give a few glimpses in these uh, areas of uh, you know, uh, you know, the subheadings. 
the moments to cherish what we have actually inherited from our teachers and how did we progress over the period of last four, four and a half decades and then how did we do it? You know, the partners from uh, various industries, government, private and uh, PSUs and then the, the last one but not the least the, that we would like to celebrate with our teachers to honor them. You know, the, the, the Ocean Engineering Center, as you see from the, the text here, uh, you know, formed in uh, 1977 to serve the most critical areas of uh, the complex situation around the coast. And that because, uh, you know, the, the, the engineering related to ocean is not as simple as what we normally do it in civil engineering because the complexity created by the environment. And then it was transformed into a full department within five years means the contribution by our teachers was so good that it has to be made as a full department with an academic program and also to enlarge. To start with, they had a very few faculty and very few students, but over a period of time, now we have grown quite big, which we will see the numbers later on, that uh, the growth indicates that, uh, you know, it's a steady manner that we are going in the right direction. This is the slide that uh, I would like to show. Uh, you know, the, the initial period where uh, the center was actually funded by the German government uh, under Indo-German, uh, you know, assistance program, wherein most of the facilities were created. Uh, you could see Professor Ravindran uh, walking along with the uh, uh, German president, which I was actually trying to get many more photos of uh, the memory, but unfortunately I could get only a few of them, so which I'm just trying to show that... Uh, uh, which some of our younger colleagues and students may not be knowing the history, so which is very important to share with all of them. This initial time, I was a student. In fact, both the projects when it was going on, I was a student here, where uh, you know the wave energy project and the water project was going on, and you could see the pictures that there was a concerted effort to develop renewable energy in terms of extracting from uh, ocean and ocean waves which you can see on the right hand side and the left hand side. And at the bottom, I could grab some of the pictures from Heritage Center, which uh, if you listen to the speech, it will be so nice to hear that I can rewind, uh, you know, when I was a student, what was happening. You know, that was very, very interesting. I, I hope uh, some of our younger colleagues can actually go through that videos. And then towards the research in the initial days of our department, some of our uh, teachers were working on uh, problems that many of us even today uh, may not be aware of, the achievements uh, towards space, towards defense. You know, the one of the projects that you can see here, the, the research, still the model is around, you know, in the afternoon when you are, the industry partners are visiting. You could see that that model we have preserved. Uh, you know, the testing of uh, capsule falling from uh, space and there, uh, you know, strength and the pressures and the impact which was studied, which was useful to ISRO. The second and third projects also, uh, you know, is, is a precursor to several space research capsules falling from uh, space and also uh, contribution towards uh, the, the space frame. Uh, you know, uh, some of our, uh, you know, faculty, senior faculty, like our Professor Vendan was working on these three projects. Uh, wherein uh, the recognition came from uh, none other than the topmost from the country uh, at the time and they received the uh, award from the DRDO for their achievements over the period of uh, uh, almost two, two decades because that, that three, three, four projects were going on for quite some time and at the end uh, they received such an award which, uh, you know, is very, very happy at that time to see that uh, our teachers were able to contribute towards the national development. So having this kind of background, uh, I would quickly go through what we have done over the last, uh, uh, you know, three decades after the formation of the, the department. Uh, you know, basically uh, taking the path from that rich heritage we had, the knowledge that we gained as, as, as a student of most of the faculty sitting in front of me, uh, you know, we were able to actually inculcate the same manner which they were doing. We were able to actually expand our uh, horizons into various industries. And, and just quickly uh, so that uh, what we had or what we are having now is actually what was built by them. In fact, we have been maintaining, upgrading, but the facilities are still the same which was 1970s or 80s, which shows that uh, the facilities created are capable of working beyond 50 years, which is normally a design life by civil engineers that we not normally call it, but 
we are able to run that system uh, and, and, and uh, work towards further research. Today we have around 600 plus students and uh, of course faculty strength has been oscillating around 20 to 25 you know, over a period of last uh, several years. And then uh, project staff has expanded from few to few hundred. That shows that the industry participation from our department towards uh, research as well as to the industry related projects has expanded tremendously, uh, which in fact last two decades, about 15, 20 years, we have been doing extremely uh, you know, high value projects as well as high tech projects. Of course, one has to take a, a balanced approach when we when we do projects because our primary goal is, is to teach, to train and uh, conduct research and then help the industry whenever, wherever required. That's one of the very important part when it is as an institute. So that's where you will see that we have not only been doing, helping the industry, but also doing a considerable amount of research in terms of uh, you know, the number of PhDs, MS, as well as publications. And that is very important because as an institute, we have to excel in all areas. Our primary core areas, you could see, uh, you know, focus into three, four major, uh, you know, kind of subdivisions. But of course, we work together in every areas, Port and Harbor, offshore, and then uh, naval architecture is our basic fundamental, uh, you know, the basic degree that we are awarding. And as well into renewable energy and the recent times we are adding into several modern technology, otherwise we could never been able to uh, succeed and survive because these are areas that in, invariably we have to conduct research together with the core areas, which is very important for us to go through the modern era. And then with regards to the growth, uh, as, as I think most of uh, our deans and director will know, that our growth in terms of uh, uh, you know, bringing research funding as well as the industry funding is steadily growing. In fact, more than 10% uh, uh, you know, kind of growth is sustainable, you could see from the chart. That means we, our relationship, our work is recognized by the industry. In many cases, uh, we have repeat clients, repeat industry partners, which indicate that uh, not many of the projects is going in the wrong direction. That is, that is very important to show that because repeat client will never come if you fail them. And that's very important to see that uh, we do a right job and, and deliver on time. And also, since research in terms of industry or uh, uh, otherwise uh, consulti consulting, we also have to consistently do research work which will actually show output to the, the research world. If you see the last five years, which I have collected actually for 10 years, that sustained publications. In fact, uh, last meeting I was actually uh, informing the director that our department has got more than five papers published per faculty per year consistently over uh, last five years, which indicate that uh, we are actually higher than the institute average, uh, which may be uh, plus minus two, two or two and a half, which indicates that not only we are doing consulting, industry oriented, and also the research projects, but we are also able to produce the publications which are useful to the actual academic research. We also have uh, been, uh, you know, uh, focused on certain areas. In fact, uh, one of the important development in the recent times that uh, the, 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 de the development of uh, the National Technology Center for Ports, which we call it Port Center, which was in, you know, basically uh, uh, you know, uh, development coming from the Ministry of uh, Ports, uh, taken up a good shape. The building is under construction. In fact, the building is completed. Uh, facilities are getting installed in uh, the Discovery Campus, which is 30 kilometers away which has got one of the best facilities that you would say in the region and are in this uh, area. The second one, which uh, we have been also working with the ONGC for uh, development of uh, uh, system for monitoring and uh, life cycle management of uh, uh, their offshore platforms. And the third one is the climate center, which we call it ABCD center. When you have entered, you might have seen, which is so that we are also forming a group of faculty which we can work together to see some outcome which will be important for the national development and also to assist the industry. You know, the, the research that originally uh, was initiated by our uh, teachers on research on uh, energy also continued with, uh, uh, you know, over the periods of time, our faculty, the younger colleagues are also uh, conducting various research on uh, energy 
basically renewable, non-renewable. You could see from uh, the point absorber type uh, wave energy device, which was deployed in uh, coast of Tutukarin, I think, few months back by one of our faculty, and a floating converter, and uh, breakwater combined with, uh, you know, the wave energy device, offshore wind farms. These are some of the research which may contribute to the renewable energy in near future, uh, which may become real truth, which actually the necessity of the day. This sports center which I was talking about, it is almost, I, I, you can see the building is uh, almost ready at the cost of 75 crores, I was told, I think. Uh, basically have got uh, state of the art facilities. We have a uh, wave flume, wave basin, but what is being constructed is larger and larger than what we have in the Department of Ocean Engineering, which houses some of the state of the art facilities, which is going to have a uh, simulator, uh, which will train the pilots from the ports as well the industry, which is a little far away. Otherwise, we could possibly take all of you to the, to the new facility, but, but I, I, I don't know whether we'll get a time today. And then the projects which I was talking about, uh, you know, the recently we launched this program by our director uh, where ONGC is using them uh, for uh, life cycle management of the old offshore platform where we can actually extend the design life. And as part of uh, Atmanirbar, this program uh, actually costs uh, almost uh, 60, 70 crores. We have actually done it for few crores for them, which indicate that we could do it instead of buying from outside. Similarly, from the port center, they have developed a, uh, VTS system, which we used to actually procure from outside, and then, uh, you know, it's a huge cost. So this VTS system is fully developed by the port center, and that indicates that we can make it instead of going out and then, uh, you know, buying every time and then pay uh, money from the, the, the country. This project, you will see, one of the projects I would like to highlight is the Haldia port where uh, Professor Murali was working on. I still remember minister was talking about the huge savings, which the method of dredging that, uh, you know, they have, um, you know, planned and given to them, every year they could save a uh, few hundred crores. So that indicates that the knowledge that we have in the department, which could contribute to save money and give a niche solution where the outside world may not be knowing fully, because we understand the subject. In fact, when I, uh, I, I hope all of you, when you enter, you see one uh, industry meets ocean, but you actually should say industry meets ocean safely, because if you meet with the ocean, it is not very safe. But here we have the knowledge of the whole ocean behavior, which we can take them and then make sure that every one of you is safe when you come. The right side project was done by one of our faculty, senior professor uh, Velu, uh, to rejuvenate that uh, Chilika Lake where, uh, you know, basically it, the mouth was closed and it was actually a problem for the in lake, lake water. And then uh, he was working for quite some time to uh, open the mouth and then make sure that uh, the environment is protected, including uh, the the the, uh, the water entry and other issues related to the the lake, which was commended by one of the award. In fact, uh, I, I I didn't put it here. And also, uh, in 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 continuation with our uh, initial uh, phase of the department, our professors uh, have been continuing to work around the coast wherever there is a problem of coastal erosion. Uh, especially Professor Sundar, uh, from the days that uh, he was working in our department, he has been doing considerable number of uh, coastal protection, especially if you go to Ennur or the coastal uh, areas of East Coast uh, from Chennai port to Ennur, you will see number of protection which otherwise would have eroded and uh, eaten away the city considerably. And that indicates that we know how to protect and basically the, the, the uh, wave dynamics near the coast is to be understood carefully. I'll just browse through some of the recent projects just to indicate that uh, we are also into infrastructure creation, which is very important part of our, uh, uh, you know, the existence as a specialist faculty. Because you see one thing, that civil engineering construction versus construction in sea is uh, many times understood a little bit differently. Oh, anyway, it is a construction. But actually the construction and its, uh, you know, survival is very important. If you see the right-hand corner of that particular middle, uh, middle of the sea one jetty. It was constructed in 2010, but it has survived seven number of cyclones almost crossing near the Kadalur area. So it indicates that if you, if you design it appropriately, it could survive without even a small damage. Similarly, various other projects you can see from the picture that we are contributing to national building uh, in terms of various infrastructure, which you will see from these pictures of Roro Terminal or uh, the first of its kind, Mumbai International Cruise Terminal we are building. In fact, it's going to be ready. Some of the breakwaters and the jetties that we see that uh, 
uh, very large facilities we are helping the country to develop so that you know the import export is also going to considerably increase the last one uh, i would like to just highlight some of the work that we are doing on uh, offshore you know many times we misunderstood that offshore platform is too small because it's underwater but actually offshore platforms are as high as uh, skyscrapers you will see that uh, one of the video that uh, you where is a voice so basically you will see that the, the difficulties that you will see in this one, one minute video that uh, if you make a smallest mistake you will lose the whole thing it will be several million dollars so that's the kind of design that you will have to make which we made it in one of the project in uh, east coast that uh, you carry and deploy and position them for offshore drilling and exploration which is uh, several thousand tons of steel getting into water and it has to come out and some of the projects I have seen myself that it goes into water, it never comes out because you didn't design properly, which will be a loss in a moment unless you understand the naval arc as well as the, the ocean engineering. And, and to mention that what we have contributed in the last, you know, 10 years or so, you know, one of the projects that at least have to be recognized that the platform got fired in 2005 and completely destroyed. We have spent time and, and basically to reconfigure and optimize the solution for ONGC to construct and resupply the oil to the Mumbai, uh, you know, the, the oil region. So basically that project was taken up fully from scratch and uh, we were able to see the light after a complete installation. Basically it, it was between 2006 to 2010. The second project you see uh, is one of the milestone in the country that it was never ever done in the country because it was done elsewhere. but. Uh, uh, installation which will be using a modern concept of floating over. Basically without a crane such a massive piece of structure is positioned and installed which is the first time that was done uh, for ONGC project which uh, I was involving in, uh, in, in various aspects of this project. And some of the offshore projects that you could see that we are helping ONGC in uh, uh, various aspects of this particular uh, oil and gas development. And Last but not the least, our department has always been involved in various uh, defense projects which we could not display the pictures here because confidential. Myself and Professor Velu are uh, working on several projects uh, which, which are strategic in nature and uh, located at various places. We can't even uh, put the pictures here because it is restricted so that uh, you know, it's not known to the various uh, outsiders. Finally, I would conclude, uh, basically, we are there from coastal areas all the way to uh, offshore. And as mentioned by director, we are starting up a new project for a sea launch, uh, which I mentioned that we have applied for a grant, which we will be soon getting it, and we will be doing that project. So from port, coastal areas, protecting, uh, you know, coastal community, offshore oil and gas, renewable energy, wind farms, and then to the deep sea mining, and then uh, you know, the sea locket ranch, which, which will save a considerable amount of cost and money to the ISRO. I would like to now just quickly go through two slides of our partners. The list is too long. Uh, just I will browse through from government agencies to private. Uh, several of them have helped us. Uh, not only providing uh, industry projects, those industry projects bring money to the department. That money is being used and for developing our infrastructure, especially the research facilities. Otherwise, uh, it will become very difficult. So that's where uh, uh, you will see that our rich culture of doing, uh, you know, basically industry projects uh, has to be continued so that we can renew uh, without any worry on all our existing facilities. Some of the major ports from Calcutta port all the way to uh, Kandla port all around the coast have been uh, our partners uh, considerably. In fact, uh, from the day uh, the department was formed, uh, it has been continuously interaction from our, uh, uh, you know, teachers and uh, uh, faculty. And now the younger faculty, like, uh, uh, you know, few of us are working very much close with every port and uh, developing several of, uh, you know, the master plans as well as for the future growth. You will just quickly browse through. Now the moments to celebrate the last part of it, I will hand over to Professor Mahes. Uh, to take over. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, uh, Professor Nalarasu, for highlighting our association with the industry. 
I now request Professor Mahesh Panchagula, Dean Alumni and Corporate Relations, to read the citation and launch the Institute Chairs in the name of our two former prof professors, Professor C. Ganapati Chattiar and C. P. Vendan. So I request Professor Mahesh to address and read the citation. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, it's a delight to be here today with, in the midst of some of our uh, friends who have uh, made the Ocean Engineering Department happen here at IIT Madras. As we all know, there are only, for a large country like India, there are only two Ocean Engineering Departments in the entire country. And only one of the two happens to be on a sea coast. Okay, and so we really are privileged to have built such a department. Let me, uh, we are uh, particularly honored today that we are going to be launching two chair professorships to honor uh, two of our colleagues who were, who played a pivotal instrumental role in making this department what it is today. The first is in the name of Professor uh, Ganapati Chatiyar. Professor Ganapati uh, received his BSc in Civil Engineering from Kerala University, was a first rank holder. He was selected under the Technical Teachers Training Program, uh, which was part of, which was part-time teaching and teacher training by professors from the United States in the College of Engineering, Gindi, and obtained his MSc Engineering in Structures from College of Engineering, Gindi. Professor Ganapati then obtained his PhD in 1963, in 1973 from the Civil Engineering Department at IIT Madras. Professor Ganapati subsequently joined the institute as a lecturer in 19, he joined the institute as a lecturer in 1964. He was selected for the Alexander von Humboldt program in 1977-78 and visited Ruhr University in Bochum, Germany. He has served in the Department of Civil Engineering for 14 years and was deputed to the Hindustan Shipyard for training in shipbuilding. He was promoted as professor in the Department of Ocean Engineering in the year 1978. During his tenure of 19 years in the department, the wave basin and other facilities were commissioned under the Indo-German Assistance Program. The first user-oriented program on port and harbor engineering was developed and more than 60 port engineers have obtained their MTech degrees from the department. And he had a role to play in that, presumably. The notable projects under his leadership include the ski jump for the Ministry of Defense, re-entry of capsule for ISRO, toad array for NPOL, development of Gopalpur port and tubular joint project for EIL, among many others. Professor Ganapati superannuated from the institute in the year 1997. Sir, we are honored that you've agreed to uh, have this chair in the department and uh, we look forward to this chair, occupant of this chair, contributing positively to the institute's growth for many years to come. Thank you again, sir. I now uh, will read the, the citation for Professor C.P. Vendan. Professor Vendan joined the services of the Institute as Assistant Professor in 1980 in the Department of Ocean Engineering. He was appointed as Associate Professor in 1988 and as Professor in 1990. He, professor Vendan served as the head of the department during 1977 to 2000 and served as the chairman of the Estate and Works Committee of the Institute as well. Professor Vendan graduated in civil engineering from College of Engineering, Gindi in 1968. He went on to obtain his master's in structural engineering from the same institution in the year 1970. He continued his academic pursuits at IIT Kanpur and per obtained his PhD in civil engineering in the year 1975. He then continued for a postdoctoral research at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, where he spent four years before he joined the then Ocean Engineering Center at IIT Madras before becoming an assistant professor and then uh, on to the professor. Right from the beginning of his career in the development, he was associated with, the, with several challenging projects, including the Wave Energy Project, the Indigenous Aircraft Carrier Project, Defense Services Project such as Space Vehicles, Underwater Vehicles, Sloshing and other Fluid Structure Interaction Problems. He has been deeply involved with 
national and international professional activities in acoustics, especially in ocean acoustics. Professor Vendan superannuated from the Institute in 2010. Sir, thank you very much for agreeing to, to have this chair in your name. It will be our way to give back uh, to your memory and to also make sure that uh, the occupant will continue to contribute positively to the growth of this institution. Thank you very much. Uh, I now request uh, Professor Mahesh to hand over the MOU to Professor Art Sundarudlu uh, for the uh, launch of the chair. Yeah, one after another. The second MOU will be handed over to Professor Nalai Rasu in honor of Professor C.P. Vendan, the launch of the chair. Uh, I now request Professor Ganapati Chettiar to deliver an acceptance speech. Respected director, respected director, <coughs> respected professors, my dear colleagues and invitees, it is a rare op opportunity for the retired faculty like me to come back again after a few years and uh, celebrate the homecoming just as the prodigal son. <coughs> Especially I have to thank the department uh, head, Professor <coughs> Sanna Siraj, <laughs> for making all the, all the arrangements and all these things. Now I am standing before you because the institute and the department has honored me with a, <coughs> a, a great honor of launching the Institute Chair Professorship in my name. I have to thank the department faculty who has made it a reality now and especially Professor Sundaravadu Elu who planned this program about three years ago for me and he consistently worked on this to make it a reality today. <coughs> I am very sure that the uh, occupant of the new chair in my name, will do research uh, uh, continuously to expand the frontiers of research in the ocean engineering, such a way that the ocean engineering frontiers will expand for the benefit of the nation. I uh, build the incumbent all the success in the, uh, his assignment, and I thank all of you for the uh, uh, occasion given to me. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Ganapati Chettiar. I now request our director to give a memento to Professor Ganapati Chettiar. I now request Professor C.P. Vendan to deliver his acceptance speech. Good morning to all of you. I'm really honored uh, 
to accept this. Uh, of course, I can't say no. <laughs> and uh, I want to appreciate the efforts of Professor Nalayarasu in putting together uh, this effort. Obviously, it gives a kick to one's ego, but then I want to look beyond that. I think you have made a perennial arrangement to support quality research by young faculty. And I'm sure you will continue this effort with many more chairs in critical areas. And uh, I'll take a little bit of my, uh, your time to uh, recount on my experience uh, as a project coordinator in the institute, because that might be uh, useful to the end coordinators who are sitting here. But I did my first uh, consultancy project for the ISRO in the early 80s. And uh, Mr. Nambi Narayanan was the person who invited us to the, uh, their guest house. In fact, he invited uh, Professor Padaninathan, who was with the Composite Center of the Institute, and uh, I from the, uh, me from the uh, Ocean Engineering Department Center at that time. And uh, he uh, briefed about the PSLV project they were uh, just developing. And then he suggested that we take up a finite element development to analyze the uh, uh, launch vehicle, both uh, stress analysis and buckling. We readily agree. And we are very hard. And we have put together a computer code uh, after several months of uh, hard work. And then we wanted to take production runs. I mean, in those days, we were working with a mainframe computer. And uh, when it came to production runs, it can be done only beyond midnight. Uh, that was the kind of uh, uh, restriction we had. And within a couple of weeks, we found that uh, the resources we have, the computer resources we have, were rather inadequate. And uh, for about two months, we really tried hard to find an alternative. That was not possible, unfortunately. And then finally, what we did was we made a request to the VSSC, that was the node agency at the time, that we'll use the uh, mainframe computing facility operated by the CMC in the Anasalai. That was an excellent uh, terminal-based system. And uh, with very little delay, they said yes. In fact, uh, I found that they didn't sit on rules. After all, their rockets, uh, rockets have to fly as early as possible. And they agreed to pay the uh, computer bills directly. That uh, probably exceeded our own original budget. And they also agreed not to cut the budget given to IIT. So with several months of hard work, we uh, successfully completed uh, the work. And then we f formed a team when DRDO approaches with uh, some uh, important projects. Uh, Professor uh, Chandu is here, the chairman uh, Naval Research Board. And then Professor Bhattacharya is also here. He's with Emmet now. And I. We for formed a team that worked very well, and probably this is a message uh, the youngsters can take. And then we worked on the uh, toad body project, uh, which uh, Professor Nalayars mentioned. Then later, we worked for almost uh, three uh, decades, I'd say, two decades, I would say, on the uh, underwater uh, missile project for the submarine launch uh, project. And uh, that has been a very learning experience, a satisfying experience. Probably I'll highlight just one uh, point in that. Uh, the important uh, uh, aspect of that project was experimentation, and that required uh, accurate force balances, multi-component force balances. And uh, obviously, one has to design and fabricate them. And uh, it was uh, the expertise of Professor uh, uh, Chandy, who is here, uh, which achieved that, and we successfully finished the project. In fact, we had an Atmanirbar man well before that term came into existence uh, well before the term came into a public domain. So it was a great experience working with them. Finally, I would like to uh, thank uh, all those who were responsible for putting this uh, chat together, uh, Professor Chandy, Professor Bhattacharya, uh, who worked with me as a group and in achieving uh, whatever little success we have uh, done. And then finally, I want to thank Professor Nalayarasu for giving uh, this uh, invitation. And my wife, Dr. Gajalakshmi, is here. I think my daughter uh, Kanimuri also may be here. So it gave us a chance to come back. In fact, it was a time travel with uh, T minus Delta T with about 20 years, uh, Delta T being 20 years, and we could meet uh, most of our uh, old friends. So thank you for this opportunity. I now request our director to hand over memento to Professor C.P. Vendan.
Okay. I now request our director to hand over the mementos to a former faculty of our department. Uh, we'll start with Professor Ravindran. First, Professor Ravindran. Professor Raju, V.S. Raju. <laughs> Professor C. Ganapati Chettiar. Professor S. Narashima Rao. <laughs> Professor Minakshi Sundaram. Professor E.D. Chandi, Professor V.G. E.D. Chandi. <laughs> Professor S.P. Subramaniam. Professor R. Natarajan. <laughs> Professor C. P. Bhendan. Professor S. Surendran. <laughs> Professor S. K. Bhattacharya. and Professor Krishna Kuti. <laughs> I thank our director to doing, for doing the honors. I now request Professor Murli to deliver the vote of thanks. Once again to all of you, <coughs> uh, actually a mere word of thanks will not be sufficient for all the people who are involved in this exercise of this growth of ICSR and also the growth of uh, Department of Ocean Engineering. However, I would like to keep it uh, formal and simple. Uh, we would uh, start from uh, the directors of the several directors of, uh, directors of IIT Midras and the entire system. 
the directors have been more than blessing to us. They have not been a simple support, but they have been more than, much more than that. And they saw to that that the Department of Ocean Engineering has gone beyond, beyond the boundaries and beyond the limits and performed to the benefit of the uh, industry and the entire society. And therefore, I would like to thank the director IIT Madras, Professor Kamakoti, and all the former directors and the entire system, and the deans of IIT Madras and the registrar of IIT Madras for this, uh, for their excellent support in bringing this uh, outcome from the Department of Ocean Engineering. <coughs> of course, our forefathers uh, have been a great source of inspiration, motivation, and also guidance to us. Uh, they have been, they've all been named uh, just before this, so I would like to uh, not name them, though personally I wanted to name them uh, as a honor, but uh, due to want of time, I would uh, skip naming them. And we thank all of them and their families in uh, bringing us to this level. The ICSR support system, I would like to thank the ICSR support system. We always have complaints about the ICSR support system. But at the end of the day, every day they prove that the ICSR support system is for the benefit of the institute and for the benefit of the faculty to protect the entire uh, environment. So therefore, we wish to thank the ICSR support system and all the people who are involved in that in providing us this support. Uh, <coughs> coming to our industry partners, there have been uh, several industry partners. We have named all of them in the different slides. But I would like to touch upon some of the names of the colleagues who are here already, starting from uh, the colleagues from the port sector. Uh, there was, uh, the port sector colleagues are led by uh, SMP Kolkata, both their uh, Kolkata docks and uh, Haldia docks. I have the deputy chairman of the Haldia docks dock system here, and we wish to thank them. And they have been uh, not only uh, funding agencies, they have been our collaborators in several intellectual products, including the vessel traffic system. They have worked with us, and uh, we have worked with them, and we have developed several technologies apart from that uh, along with this. In this list, uh, we also have uh, VOC Port Trust, the deputy conservator is here, who have uh, worked with us in the VTMS system, and we have uh, Chennai Port in this list, uh, Kamraj Port Limited in this list, Kondla Port, JNPT, Paradeep, and also IWA as a knowledge partners and uh, technology collaborators to develop new knowledge and expand the horizon of knowledge and technology uh, coming out of uh, this uh, campus. Not to, not, to, uh, not to forget, and uh, more than a support and uh, more than a funding agency, our other collaborators are Vizag Port, Goa Port, Mumbai Port, etc. <coughs> the Indian Navy has been a great source of support for us, working with us in various uh, domains. And uh, they are joined by Cochin Shipyard Limited and other shipyards in the country, the private shipyards in the country, and our uh, heartfelt thanks to them. Uh, there are many, many marine construction industry colleagues who have, who have, who are, who have presented themselves here. They are led by ITD Cementation, LNT, and other colleagues from other uh, construction sector. <coughs> uh, we have, uh, again, this list is joined by Sunmar, IMC Group, our uh, scientific uh, partners, Indomer, Coastal Hydraulics, ONGC, Gujarat Maritime Board, JM Pakshi, Coast Guard, and my nudging industry colleagues from ISDPL, uh, Yandi Nul, Dredging Corporation of India, etc. Apart from the industry, the greatest uh, source of support for us is our students. They learn with us, they also suffer in uh, learning with us in this particular process. And without their support, we, 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 cannot, we could not have reached to this extent. So our great uh, thanks and uh, appreciation to them. Our research staff are followed by the students and they have been a great support in this particular uh, system and our special thanks to them. Apart from that, uh, the entire ecosystem of the IIT Madras and the admin staff and the security staff of IIT Madras has been a great support, support to us and uh, the departments are heartfelt uh, thanks to them. And there could have been, uh, th there will be many others who whom I have not named who have been involved in supporting us directly or indirectly. 
the department wishes to thank all of them in this process. Thank you very much. I now request the audience to stand up for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jaya hai Bharat bhagya vidata Punjab shindhu gujarat maratha Dravid uchal banga Vindya himachal jamuna ganga Uchal jaladhi taranga तब शुभ नामे जागे तब शुभ आशीष मागे गाए तब जय गाथा जनगण मंगल धायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विदाता जय हे जय हे जय हे Jaya, 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 hey. Thank you. Uh, we'll now proceed to the adjacent hall for opening the exhibition. Professor Ravindran and Professor V.S. Raju will be opening it. And uh, it will be followed by a tea break. So kindly go to the exhibition hall, which is just adjacent room over here. After the, uh, you know, ribbon cutting,
So very good morning again. So let us start the second session of the day. So it's an industry feedback talks. So in the event itself named by ICSR as Industry Meets Oceans 2023. So it's a very appropriate to invite few of our <coughs> industry and uh, port sectors to talk before us, mainly uh, their requirement and uh, academic and research institutes involvement in solving the problems. Yes, Ocean has seven hundred of problems and every time we see that the solution is not same. We cannot duplicate or replicate uh, another solution to for the same port that both two neighboring birthing structures uh, we uh, have seen tremendous changes also. So it's not that we cannot replicate a design one to another. So in that way, it's very unique. And we would like to hear from our industry partners and uh, port and uh, other government department senior officials on their experience and uh, indicating their problems and uh, their experience. I request uh, our industry partners to limit to five minutes. So I now invite uh, Sri A.K. Megra, Deputy Chairman, Valdiata Complex, SMB Kolkata, to talk before us. Good afternoon to all the participants, the respected professors of the Ocean Engineering Department. Uh, I just want to uh, say a few words from the uh, port sector to the Ocean Engineering Department, IIT Madras. They are a great supporter for the port industry as a whole, especially the major port. Nowadays, the situation has come that many of the ports are having very, very less number of civil engineers. So every time any new projects come or any difficulties we are facing, we have to look upon the Ocean Engineering Department of the IIT Madras. And every time uh, this department and their professors have come forward to solve the problem. So I will highlight a few critical projects that I was involved with the IIT Chennai, uh, especially with uh, Professor Dr. Sundar Vadivalu, Professor Sundar and uh, Professor Murli. When uh, I was the Chief Engineer at uh, Visakhapatnam Port uh, in 2015-20, uh, to 20, many of you know that in 2014 October, a super cyclone passed through the Visakhapatnam Harbour. And after this super cyclone, when this uh, tracking of the eye was tracked, and it was found that the eye was passing through the uh, almost middle of the south breakwater and almost uh, one end of OSTT. OSTT is the offshore tanker terminal. There are uh, five uh, mooring dolphins and two breasting dolphins and one cup that is central unloading platform of this jetty. This was one of the major source of uh, crude import by the uh, HPCL refinery which is set up in the Visakhapatnam port. So there is a huge human cry, the uh, jetty was decommissioned because two of the end uh, mooring dolphin, uh, MD4 and 5, was heavily tilted as well as one birthing, birthing dolphin, VD2. So initially the estimate was made by the contractor who was originally uh, designed as EPC contractor uh, way back in late 70s, early 80s. And it is a huge cost, it is coming around 80 crores. So we are definitely in two mind and there was a pressure from the ministry because one important and the petroleum ministry itself, uh, there is a, a huge problem they are facing for crude handling because all the ships, only bigger ships they can handle in the outside uh, SPM, but smaller uh, parcel size load they cannot handle. So then after much discussion with the Professor Sundar Vadiwali and Ocean Engineering Department, 
a unique solution they have given they have rebuilt they from the tilted part they have rebuilt those uh, slides are not there. here actually uh, if i can show it it will be much uh, easier for the people to understand about those who are involved in the project and the department they understand because they are associated with this project we have rebuilt the jetty from the tilted portion to up to the required level and uh, connected uh, by the uh, gangways and around to within two and two and a half years the jetty was made and since uh, 2000 i think 18 end this is started functioning almost uh, four and a half years five years it is perfectly running on like there is one very very important project visakhapatnam another project was uh, wq7 project this project uh, this jetty was constructed with seat piles uh, during 2002 2004 uh, in after 2005 around 2005 february this jetty was found failing because it is getting tilted to the seat side uh, to the extent which is not permissible under the uh, is code and it was declared failed and you know for a government sector if a project fails within two to three years there are a lot of consequences to faced by the engineers and officers including investigation in, and it has gone to cbi and v cvc so many things have happened so a stage has come that uh, nobody was uh, willing to touch that rebuilding project so uh, i st uh, started a dialogue with professor sundarbadi valu he has given some unique design with the touch piles and in 2000 late 15 and 16 we have started and not only that one another one by the side that is wq7 and that wq8 also that has been completed by 18 19 and this uh, is a very unique project 560 meter length and presently the visakhapatnam port is going for mechanization of this uh, berth so this is these are the two there are other projects where ocean engineering department was associated with the port and these two projects are very very important professor sir is there you will be explaining much more detail on that. During my tenure at the Cochin Port, uh, Cochin Port, Vallar Padam uh, is a ICTT, uh, International Container Transshipment Port. Uh, but the project conceived was only having 13, 14 meter of draft. And uh, nowadays, uh, the number of uh, ship sizes for the, especially the container ship sizes, are growing tremendously. So, minimum 18.5 meter draft vessel has to be handled there, if not more. Uh, with having 22,000 TUs capacity or more. The uh, birth was not, uh, firstly birth was not <coughs> capable, uh, another birth uh, has to be built, but that is the responsibility of the concessionaire, but there is not, uh, that much of draft is not available in the shipping channel. So with the NTCPWC and Professor Murli, uh, we have started a project how to uh, de depend the uh, J, I mean the channel and whether it will sustain or not through mathematical modeling. So after the initial report, uh, ministry was a little bit convinced that they have made a committee. Uh, myself was a part of the committee and Professor Murli and uh, we have given some 463 crore project to the ministry which has recently been sanctioned and Minister of Shipping has, uh, though I am not uh, in coaching port so as of now, but 50% uh, ministry has decided to grant and this project uh, will give a rejuvenation to the Cochin port who is presently handling 34-35 million if this project is uh, uh, grown up uh, though this this capacity of the Vallar Padam will increase to about two and a half million TUs presently they are handling 0 0.7, 0 0.8 million so their cargo can go up to 48, 49, even 50 million uh, once this project is taken up and completed one side it is the concession here to build the jetty and this uh, maintenance of the uh, depending and maintenance of the channel which is the responsibility of the coaching port for which uh, Professor Murli and Ocean Engine Department supported the port with their report with their analysis through mathematical modeling this is another very important project which uh, <coughs> I was also associated I am just telling my experience with association of this uh, great department and coming to uh, when I came back to uh, Haldia uh, this Valdia channel, you can see the right hand uh, side channel is the eastern channel uh, through which the Calcutta and Haldia bound uh, ship used to, uh, which was the pointer one? Right, 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 fine. Uh, th th this was the eastern channel uh, through which Calcutta bound ships used to come and for Haldia, 
so after uh, some time this will go to this is called Oct Auckland channel then uh, crossing Jelinangam and uh, upper Jelinangam local lower Jelinangam then Haldi anchor is going to Haldia because this particular Auckland channel was uh, having the maximum number of dredging quantity almost uh, 10 million and total dredging was about 18 to 19 million every year and port was spending huge quantum of money about 400 plus crores uh, there was a uh, western channel uh, closer uh, which was made uh, maybe early 60s or uh, late 60s because at that point of time the analysis shows that unless we close this channel we cannot have sufficient water in that uh, but this channel was uh, opened though in 2012-13 but because this is a new channel and whether it will behave correctly or not there is a, a, a huge discussion in the department and the entire port whether uh, this will remain or this will silted up or so. So the study was given to Professor Murray and NTCPWC. They come forward with their mathematical modeling that this is a very, very sustainable channel. So for Haldia bound safe, we instead of going through Auckland channel, uh, we should follow this new channel which is called Eden channel. And they are, uh, this is from 2013-14, it is uh, now maintaining a steady depth, steady depth. Uh, which is much more than this because Auckland was the uh, uh, governing bar for the at that time or Auckland was the governing bar for the Haldia bound safes. Now with this uh, new channel opened up uh, the draft for the Haldia is increased by 1 to 1.2 meter. Those who are in the uh, 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 representing the seaports where the uh, draft are 14, 15 meter for them this 1 meter uh, rises. Uh, uh, not much, but for the Haldia and Calcutta port, which is a river port, for them, is a shallow draft for one meter rise is a huge one. So much so that when this our uh, Haldia cargo was uh, dipped down to 32, 33 million, once it has handled 43, it has come down to almost 32, 33, almost 10 million. Now with the opening of the channel, and this channel is maintained self almost, so hardly any dredging over there because of the uh, say. Uh, whatever the highlighted by the uh, study by Professor Murli and the NTCPWC. Now this year the Haldia dock will uh, handle maybe 48 to 49 million tons of cargo within a span of 3-4 years. Not only the loss we have made, uh, the total quantum of jump is more than almost 50%. From 33-34 it has gone to 48-49. So that was a, a great project, great support from the uh, Ocean Engineering Department especially and this has already been highlighted by uh, Professor Nalaya Raju during his speech also, uh, one of the most important project that we have done it. That other important project like uh, your Howrah Bridge, many of the people do not know that Howrah Bridge has been constructed and still maintained by Calcutta Port Trust, the great Howrah Bridge and there are uh, certain issues with the universal joint and so this is not an ocean engineering but basically structural engineering. So, Professor uh, Saha, Professor Sundar Valiwal has also came forward to give us the uh, design support uh, for uh, certain changes that uh, work will uh, now will be taken up. So, as a whole, uh, I am telling to all the students and the uh, present here that this department is a great help to all the ports. Maybe the other ports, uh, their uh, representative will be there, they will highlight. So, I uh, expect that this department will continue to support the ports in years to come so that we can sustain and give a good competition. At the moment we are giving good competition to the private ports by because if you see that the last 3-4 years the uh, percentage share of the cargo in the major port is increasing and that is uh, uh, decreasing in the uh, private ports. So these are possible because of the many infrastructure projects that has port has been taken up. And if you see 90 to 95 percent of the cases, this is the ocean engineering department of this great institute which was involved and giving a very, very economic design for which major ports are now uh, growing in a big way. Thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, occasion to speak about uh, the uh, story, uh, success story of this department and uh, port sector as a whole and then their collaboration. Thank you very much. Namaste. So thank you, sir. And uh, just recollect uh, most of the cyclonic time <coughs> while the mode of mode is evacuation, but our team normally go towards the pre-cyclone and post-cyclone uh, measurements as a part of the learning experience. So in that way, we learn a lot on the extreme events.
by venturing into the extreme event itself. Okay. Now I call upon uh, Sri M. Karnanadi, uh, IOT, ONGC, to give his insight. Good morning. It's a great day to be with my professors and guides from whom I learned the technology of offshore engineering and ocean technology. Uh, thanks to Professor Nalayrasu and Sanna Siraj, uh, they have invited me a month back. So, uh, so I'm working in uh, IUOT. It is the one of the R&D Institute of uh, ONGC, uh, working mainly on uh, offshore engineering and ocean technology. Uh, brief about uh, ONGC, we, uh, we have presence in upstream and downstream refining, then uh, production value added uh, products, and we are involved in power generation as well as uh, renewables. Our uh, ONGC, we have uh, uh, Videsh Arm, OVL, uh, they have presence in uh, 15 countries in 35 projects. In India, we operate uh, both in western offshore and eastern offshore. Uh, Professor Nalayrasu uh, presentation, uh, it covered many of the new projects. Uh, he was involved in uh, almost in all the projects, either from ONGC side or uh, from the uh, EPC contractor side. Uh, I'll be presenting, I'll be discussing about uh, uh, the maintaining the old existing platforms. We operate uh, more than 330 fixed offshore jacket structures in both in Western offshore and Eastern offshores. About 50% of the platform, they have completed their design life. These platforms were designed for a design life of 25 years. The, our first platform was installed in 1976. Uh, thereafter, gradually our uh, number of platforms uh, we increased and uh, today we are more than 330. Uh, over the period, uh, these platforms were designed based on API RP2A. Over the period, API revised the hydrodynamic coefficients, and there was upward revision in marine growth criteria also. Uh, earlier platforms were designed with 38 mm thickness uh, marine growth. Now the thickness has been raised to 100 mm uh, thickness from plus, five, plus 3 to minus 30 meter, below that uh, 50 mm thickness. Uh, and hydrodynamic coefficient also uh, uh, underwent uh, upward revision. Because of that, there is an uh, increase in hydrodynamic loading of the order of uh, 20 to 25%. For this increased loading, our old platforms, they are not meeting the structural integrity requirement. So, uh, so if it is a new platform, uh, while designing a new platform, we can redesign the thickness or uh, st stiffness we can uh, increase. But managing the existing platforms, old platform, it's a great challenge. Uh, IOT, we have a, a structure group uh, of uh, seven engineers, uh, uh, mainly civil engineers. They come with uh, BTEC uh, civil engineering. They don't have any idea about uh, offshore structures. So what we have done, uh, we approached uh, Professor Nalayrasu uh, for having a collaborative projects for knowledge enhancement. Uh, ONGC being a public sector undertaking, uh, our terms and conditions, uh, it's not acceptable to uh, IIT. There were many classes. Uh, because of those classes, uh, we could not take up any projects with the IIT. So we, 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 uh, uh, we have discussed Threadbare and which are the classes which can be removed from the terms and conditions so that we can take it forward. And uh, we are myself and Professor Nalayrasu, we have uh, discussed and we have uh, identified those classes and we have taken it to our management and management has agreed for removal of those classes. Based on that, we have taken projects back to back uh, uh, since 2010. Every year we could take up uh, projects uh, for, uh, uh, for knowledge upgradation uh, of our uh, team. Uh, moreover, uh, he has carried out number of short-term projects, be it uh, offshore structural engineering and offshore foundation engineering. Based on that, uh, ONGC uh, nominated our people for uh, the short-term courses. 
And through that, we have developed the capability. Today, uh, we uh, carry out all the studies, structural integrity studies, in-house. Had it been uh, outsourced, there will be a lot of outgo uh, from uh, ONGC. And each project's cost, uh, recently we have taken up a commercial project for uh, external agency. So we have charged around 1.5 crores for four platforms. That is the order of analysis it costs. Uh, so in a year, we carry out around 40, 40 such studies for our platforms. Uh, one of the recent projects, he, he has discussed about the development of the structural integrity management system. Uh, APA, they have revised the code in 2014. They have come out with a new code called APA RP2 SIM. That discusses the, discusses the management of existing platforms. So that uh, recommends we have, uh, for development of structural integrity management system. So for uh, structural integrity management system, I, I was going through the uh, net and who are the uh, agencies uh, they can offer this technology. So I contacted four or five uh, agencies and invited the proposal. There were a lot of various in the cost. Some agency quoted 110 crores. Now only I'm telling him. Some, some agency, they, they quoted around, uh, say, 11, 11 crores. And uh, it was, uh, the minimum one was, uh, uh, say, 5 crore. And we could not, being a public sector, we could not, uh, uh, say, come to a conclusion uh, for uh, award of the contract. Because there is a lot of variation. Then I approached professor. And we had a detailed discussion. And he has uh, understood our requirement. And we developed this technology, uh, in-house technology, uh, at a cost of, uh, say, less than two crores. That is the, that is the order of uh, technology uh, we have developed through uh, uh, this collaborative project. Uh, another interesting uh, project, uh, and a, we, we, I can call it as a challenging project. We have some uh, platforms in uh, Tapti field. Uh, one, of the field one of the platform, it was uh, installed at a water depth of 23 meter. So the main challenge was uh, there is a filling of soil filling of the of, of 18 meter. So uh, we could not uh, take up a jack-up rig for work over operations. Uh, Professor Sundar Vadvelu offered his uh, uh, consultancy. Successfully, we could take, a, take the uh, jack-up rig there, and we have successfully completed the work over operations. Uh, it was an interesting project, and it, were, uh, it was a really challenging project. So with this, I, I uh, thankfully, I offer my gratitude uh, to my professors and uh, Ocean Engineering Department uh, for offering the technology to ONGC. Uh, I am uh, uh, grateful uh, for the professors. And uh, I am uh, I'm announcing here that we have a few more projects in pipeline for, uh, for better technology development. Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shrikar Nanidhi. So thanks for limiting to five minutes, because uh, I know that there are a lot, of, lot to stay from ONGC side, because uh, last 40 years, there are tremendous work uh, at Department of Ocean Engineering B a work with ONGC. Thank you. So next, I invite Dr. Chandra Mogan, Director, Managing Director, Intermer Hostel Eta Lakes. <coughs> One way, it's at a unique that uh, it's not only from industry partner, and being in Enevo Goa, it's like uh, our co own colleagues too. Sir. Thank you very much, uh, <coughs> Professor Niaz Raju. Huh? Uh, I just uh, uh, express my the happiness to see my gurus during 80s who taught us. Yes, I am actually a student of uh, IIT for PhD 85 to 89. I was a student of Professor V.S. Raju. Our Professor Ganavaj Chetiyar was the head of the department. 
and I had very good interaction with Narasimha Rao sir and Ravindran sir. And uh, uh, when I, I was in NIO for about 10 years experience, I came to Washington Engineering Division uh, IIT. Uh, in NIO, we do basic research. If you talk about the uh, now waves, they will go on till Navier-Stokes equation, this, that, all they can talk. But someone, if they ask, what would be the crust height? If you want to construct a breakwater, they all will run. So that kind of thing, when I come over to uh, Washington Division, as a scientist I was moving, I got really surprised. Where at that time, uh, Professor Ganavet Jatya, Sundarudi. Actually, I seen three uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, generations of uh, uh, faculty over here. The earlier faculty, that Professor V.S. Raju, and Ganabhaj Jetia, they are doing a lot of consultancy. After that, like Sundar Vadi Velu and Sundar, their group, they are doing. Now, Sanasya Raju and Burli, they are a third generation. Fourth generation also, I hope I will see. And uh, uh, that time, Washington Division, if you see, people will be running from one faculty, they will be running, they will, they will be taking class, they will come and they will be doing some kind of sponsored work. And uh, I was asking once, uh, Sundar Vadi Velu, Sir, how you are doing this, uh, are you not get scared? Then he told me, if you don't tell, who else in India can do that? Yeah, most of the projects are taken by foreigners. We should do it. Nothing will happen. If at all anything happens, we can say, there cyclo damage the structures, we can say. But you do it. He used to tell. Then I asked, uh, that time in 89, I asked my professor, Sir, uh, yes, I am not very much keen in uh, R&D. Uh, can I do like this, come out and start a company? He said, you do it. So, 98, I came out, started this Indomar Coastal Hydraulics, and I am completing 25 years. And we had a very long association with IIT. Still, I feel I am part of IIT. I do a lot of projects for IIT. IIT gets a lot of things from me. We exchange all the you know, scientific ideas and everything. We are all working together. IIT goes, I am just going behind. And I am very happy to tell that. So, the kind of courage and confidence with the subject knowledge, it was it was seeded by the faculty members of Washington Department, which I taken to my organization. And I also have completed 750 projects uh, till today. And uh, I'm very happy to, you know, for uh, giving me this uh, kind of opportunity to stand in front of you and talk about this uh, department. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Next, I invite uh, Sri Dijo C. Matthew, Head Marine Structures Business Segment, Heavy uh, Civil Infrastructure, LNT, where they took up a lot of challenging special projects. And uh, we are happy that we could as associate with them in many projects like that. Yeah, a very good afternoon. <coughs> to all the professors, all the industry partners, <coughs> and the students. Yeah, I am also an alumni of uh, IIT. I had done my M.Tech with electives from Ocean Engineering Department. I had done an M.Tech in Construction Technology and Management. <coughs> Currently, I am handling uh, the marine structures business of LNT. Before I moved to business, I was handling design for marine structures, and I had a long association I should not say I had. LND have, is having a long association with the uh, Ocean Engineering Department. And when it comes to any marine projects, <coughs> and if you have to do something innovative, always uh, the clients, they want to stick to what is written on the books. And it's, it's not easy to convince anybody. So that is where we always run to IIT. And the professors were always proactive in looking at it on the, looking at the practical aspects, whether it be constructability, whether it be the design <coughs> life, or any other aspects, durability, they give solutions looking at all the aspects. We have been associated for a lot of projects, and like when there are issues with uh, structures, or even enabling structures getting damaged due to cyclone, how to do the retrofitting, all those aspects, uh, IIT was always proactive in supporting and giving constructible and cost-optimal solutions. Because as contractors, we always look at doing any project at the minimal cost, at the same time without compromising the quality 
and durability aspects. So uh, it was always there. They were always there to support. And we look forward to that association. And we continue to do that. And sometimes when we want to do something, uh, some research on new aspects like floating breakwaters, uh, for carrying out model studies, numerical model studies, or physical model studies, uh, multiple projects we are associated with the IIT. And what is important is there are some government organizations where a lot of time is taken, even though we need to, and for us, we always uh, come to them at the last minute. And without looking at the time aspects, it was all done on a quick uh, basis. So always that proactiveness was visible whenever we approach Ocean Engineering Department and we look forward to continue this association. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Shri Shridhiju. So next, I invite Shri Kumarajan, Vice President, Project San Mark Plus. Thank you, Shri Good afternoon to all. Our association with Ocean Engineering Department started in 2003. Then we started uh, thinking of building our own ethylene import terminal at Karakal, where LNTEC was the contractor. Uh, we appointed Ocean Engineering as a proof checking consultant for that. Unfortunately, on 26 December 2004, tsunami struck and it raised the entire structure. Viju uh, knows uh, he was the a designer at the time. So we were under the compulsion to prove the government that the designed structure will survive if a similar magnitude tsunami is going to come. So IIT has helped and done the modeling and proved to the government that similar magnitude tsunami, if it comes, then the structure will survive. Our next association started in 2007 and 8, where we built our VCM import terminal, where Dr. Nalayarasu is a designer to Afghans. Yes, uh, he already mentioned that the terminal survived in the severest cyclone, Tane, with uh, one minute sustained speed of 165 km per hour. None of our structure, touched as uh, not damaged, only few cable trays and cable were damaged, and we could resume our operation within a week. And also, we uh, Ocean Engineering associate, uh, associated with us for our TCA is on our Egypt terminal, which is not, uh, we have not taken up that project. It's a fixed terminal uh, platform in Mediterranean Sea. And presently, Ocean Engineering is uh, involved in designing of 6MLD diesel plant and also some expansion activity. So day in, day out, we are with, uh, we are coming to Ocean Engineering Department for some kind of consultancy, advice and everything. One thing we have to appreciate is the response time from Ocean Engineering is very, 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 very shorter and very much, uh, very good compared to other industry standard. For example, if we are meeting some difficulty in execution, the method, uh, due, uh, due to methodology or some other aspect, once the feedback is given, the response and remedy is coming within quick time. That is, uh, that should be appreciated and it's well among the industry standard. So I thank uh, Ocean Engineering for all uh, this help. And we treat them as a partner in our development. And uh, one more thing, we gave the first order to a company, uh, Planis. It's uh, underwater ROV. We gave the first order to them. It's actually incubated in IIT. So that, uh, that is also a thing. So I wish the Ocean Engineering Department to achieve much, much more heights in the in future. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Mr. Kumarajan. And uh, next, I invite uh, Sri D.K. Ponte, Deputy Chief Engineer, Naval Projects, uh, and the Man Lakshadweep Harbor Works Ministry of Shipping, Port Blair. So, LSW, in fact, <coughs> almost uh, each and every, sir, all the projects uh, we have been involving since it's our inception, and I think uh, every bit of uh, infrastructure developed by LSW. Our hands are there. इस सभा में उपस्थित सभी को मेरा सादर प्रणाम। 
I always long for uh, standing on the dais of IIT Madras. The opportunity first I got uh, during the year 2000. And uh, that day also I started with one small sloka. The same thing I want to repeat today also. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Sakshat Prabrahmam, Tasmay Sri Guru Venama. Guru Govind Dohu Khade Kako Lagu Pai, Balihari Guru Apano Govind Milai. Thank you, my dear teachers, my gurus, who have shown us the light in this darkness. I graduated from University of Kerala in 1994 and uh, qualified through UPSC and uh, got posted in Androth in Lakshadweep group of islands where construction of breakwater was on the way. Meanwhile, I got the opportunity to come to Chennai in the year 2000 for a short term course. Thereafter, my department, that is Andaman Lakshadweep Harbour Works under Ministry of Shipping, which was formed in, during the year 1965, October 1965, and in the last 57 years, the department has created landing facilities, harbour infrastructure projects, apart from projects in core sector also and uh, have come a long way in the last 57 years. IIT Madras has been contacted by our department since long. I don't remember exactly when uh, my department had approached IITM, but I know since 1996, when I joined my organization as a junior engineer. Since then, most of the project uh, which is taken up by ALHW, as uh, Sanasi Raj sir has said, be it a small project, be it a big project, or be, be it a large value ticket, in every project uh, we had associated with IITM. And uh, Department of Ocean Engineering, through our uh, Professor uh, Sundarwadi Veluji, Professor Murli Saab, Professor uh, Nalayarasu sir, Professor Sanasi Raj sir, Professor uh, Arvindan sir, uh, Professor Gandhi sir, of course I don't see Gandhi sir here today. They all were, uh, they all were uh, associated with ALHW in, uh, in bringing our department uh, to such a long way. Almost uh, all the projects uh, had been uh, successful. It is all, uh, it is not possible for me to narrate all the projects, but few of the projects I would like to uh, narrate. Of course, today I am associated with uh, uh, strategic projects, uh, the details of which cannot be narrated on this platform. That is why I am not able to uh, present any photograph over here. Those projects which has come up in the recent past, is our unique facilities that has been created for the first time in Asia. Of course, it would not have been uh, practically possible without uh, the personal uh, involvement of uh, uh, Professor Dr. Uh, S. Nelle Resuji. And uh, the project has been a great success uh, for uh, our uh, defense. The details of, of course, the details I cannot tell you again. It is a unique facility. And uh, there are many more projects uh, which, uh, which are lined up, which is in pipeline. And uh, it, it all are large value tickets for which, uh, again, uh, we shall be looking forward uh, to IITM, which has, uh, I, I believe probably IIT Madras is the only institute which has got a dedicated uh, Department of Ocean Engineering. And uh, 
we are having a long way to go ahead and I take this opportunity to thank uh, all of you present here to listen, uh, uh, listen to me and uh, special thanks to Dr. Nalir Susar to guide me to stand uh, like a supporting pillar especially for me to support uh, round the clock 24 by 7. Thank you very much uh, for giving me the opportunity to stand here and inviting me. Thanks. Thanks a lot. So thank you, Mr. Pandey. Next, uh, I invite uh, <coughs> Captain Praveen Kumar Singh, DCVOC Port Trust, and um, well, I recollect uh, VOC port. I just uh, tell you a thing about four generation work at VOC port by S. Process C Ganavadi has designed a pipeline system for DCW and 90s. And uh, later, Prosunril used to certify it every six months. We have that such so mandatory for all that uh, pipeline system. Later, he handed over to me and uh, the second decade. Now I handed over to Sriram to continue for certification in the last couple of years too. He is continuing. So there are four generation and uh, they are actually this is uh, just an example and uh, we have been continuously doing many works on that. Sir, Captain Prince. What are you planning to show? Live, huh? Good afternoon, sirs, my colleagues, and uh, all the people who are involved in the development of this department, sir. I thank uh, everyone for because it also helped us also. Like uh, sir just pointed out that uh, the connection with our port is for last four decades now, and. Uh, it, they have always been there for the help in so many other projects in our port. My direct interaction with uh, the department happened in uh, 2020, sir. Actually, uh, one of our uh, VTS, which was uh, like being run by one of a foreign uh, company, and the contract got over and uh, there was a provision for extension for the uh, next two years wherein uh, the firm demanded 100% uh, more the cost which was running. They were running at a cost of about 3.7 lakh per month and they demanded around 8 lakh rupees per month for continuing for the next two years. And that is where like uh, even our finance department is really tough and it was not possible for us to go through any further but how to run the show. And that time uh, we came in touch with NTCBWC and uh, we took some time but uh, ultimately on 26th May 2021, we were able to sign a MOU with them with regard to the development of our own software. Prior to that, we were always dependent on some of the foreign companies and uh, ultimately uh, they started the work on 10th July with a lead time of 18 months for the development of software. However, the software was ready by 30th March 2022 and it was uh, inaugurated by our Honorable Minister of Shipping on 30th September uh, last year when he came to visit our port. And this is the live uh, software what uh, the development has taken place. This is actually live and uh, now uh, even though we were earlier dependent on some uh, uh, marine traffic and other things which was not giving us a live uh, 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 this thing demo uh, like live uh, picture of the vessels it was always sometimes a delay of two to three minutes or sometimes a couple of hours depending on uh, how they are getting the data now this software is not only uh, used by our present vts staff it is also available in the um, like as in the mobile of my chairman sir and my entire pilots apart from this uh, we are having a uh, like uh, apart from they getting a live uh, data, they are also uh, able to plan their uh, movement uh, by seeing the vessels themselves that what is the ETA and other things, 
which is actually reduced our overall uh, time for the pilotage also. <laughs> then uh, the biggest advantage what we are getting as on date, sir, uh, with this uh, kind of a software is that uh, apart from this, we have also uh, like uh, mm, made one software for the pilot. Usually, uh, whoever is in touch with shipping, the pilots used to carry a actually hard copy of the form, carrying it on the vessel and getting the master sign on the timings. Now, what we have done, we have developed uh, uh, two things in this. One is the pilot card has become electronic now which we are planning to launch uh, on uh, this maritime day on 5th April next month. And uh, another thing that, uh, that uh, the vessels which are coming into my port limit, now this is the port limit. So earlier we were dependent on the uh, vessel to give us the timing that what time the vessel enters my port limit. The chartering and many things are depending as per the chartering terms that what time the vessel is entering into my port limit. Now this has been automated in my port. So any vessel which is entering in my port, the moment they cross this line, the entry is automatically logged into the system without anyone's interference, the countdown starts and the same thing happens when the vessel departs from my port. And day to day also like uh, we are always in touch with the team sir and uh, we are actually uh, Whatever we are requiring day-to-day uh, -day requirements, like this is the uh, on the right side, uh, what we can see over here, that uh, weather data is available with us. The camera is uh, obviously auto uh, focus. It is automatically, if you select a vessel, it automatically starts showing the vessel. And apart from that, we have got the tide data also, which is readily available. And uh, hopefully from 5th of, uh, April, even my stakeholders will be uh, happily using this software to know about their vessel. Otherwise, uh, half the time they will be calling our VTS people and asking that where is my vessel, where is my vessel. But now with this kind of uh, app on their mobile, they will be able to directly get the information without disturbing our VTS stuff. And uh, also, uh, I would once again like to thank you that for the future also, sir, it is not the end, and there are let, uh, many more things which uh, we are uh, going to integrate. As of now, because of NTCBW, sir, we have only saved around uh, 6 crore rupees, sir, by having our own Make in India software. Thank you very much, sir. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Captain Thank you. Praveen. I Next, I request Sri, I invite Sri Kazik Nandi, Director of ITD Simitation, to brief on their experiences. everybody uh, since it's a, such a humbling experience to be here uh, I think first time I came in 1993 fresh out of college when I joined my work in Tutikorin IIT Chennai was doing the proof checking that time Dr. Arvindan after that uh, we have been working with for many many projects for the last 30 years. Today, I think the best thing what I feel is the theme, the industry meets ocean. So it's ocean of knowledge, ocean of wisdom, and ocean of uh, expertise, which these are very, very important for us because I am from a construction company. There are so many experts and consultancy companies, but we as a construction company, whenever we are in a problem, whether it is technical or any other, we look at IIT Chennai. That is, I think, uh, the best, they can give us the best comfort and the best solutions, etc. Uh, now, <clears throat> I'll just name a few projects uh, which we have been associated with in various capacities, uh, like 
as I said, to the current external coal handling system, which was a two kilometer long conveyor system in open sea, outside the breakwater, which was built by us, the design was done by IIT. Since then, after that, uh, till recent past, uh, we are uh, working in Mumbai port, JD5, presently chemical bath, JNPT, LJC, in Vizag, uh, we have uh, worked under uh, IIT Chennai's Professor Velu's design. In still now, war on what to work is going on. Andaman, Mr. Pandey just now mentioned about the project uh, in under LSW. So many projects we are working, uh, we are executing, constructing with the design given by IIT. But for us. I would say the other, uh, when Professor Nalarasu's presentation, there was a, a rectangle with four different roles IIT Chennai is, uh, they are playing. One is, of course, teaching. Okay, we, uh, we are few probably in this whole place, few unfortunate people who have not got the opportunity to study here, but <laughs> it's, uh, again, uh, Excellent, has been excellent experience. The second part was uh, consultancy. Yes, I just mentioned about some. The other two parts also has been uh, very, uh, I mean, uh, for us had been, uh, uh, we have been uh, very uh, thankful for those other two parts. One is the training, and the fourth one was uh, research. So uh, the training part, in fact, being uh, from the construction field, uh, I just wanted to put it on record that if, because we construction engineers, so many times we just go by our experience, not by our educational learning. Because till today, I think 99% of the institute do not teach the civil engineers about the constructability issue. So they, each of us, we have learned through our day-to-day -day work and through our seniors' experience. There, I think, uh, something more jointly we and IIT and various other institutes we probably need to do. Because day by day, the construction industry is becoming uh, more and more technology-driven. Equipments, advanced equipments, and time and uh, is becoming shorter and shorter. Sometimes we are competing with international companies. So we need that support, and uh, we are also uh, from the from our side, we are ready to support IIT if we can do something. And the most important part for us is, in one word, is the constructability. All those who have been associated a little bit with design and construction of any infrastructure, any kind of uh, project, especially in the uh, <clears throat> ocean engineering sector, I think the, there are so many people who can create beautiful designs, but whether it is constructible in the desired cost and timeline, that part is very few, even uh, some of the international consultancy organizations also sometimes fail to meet that expectation from us, the desired expectation, because, okay, design may be fantastic, but the budget exceeds sometimes, the, it's become very difficult to build that as per the guideline of the contract, etc. This is where uh, we have been always been benefited with the ad advice, guidelines of our professors, revered professors. And whenever we face challenges, I, can, I just want to mention one small example. Uh, uh, we, we are doing a very large project in Udanguri, which is building a breakwater eight kilometers into the sea. And uh, it's an island breakwater. But when we started the project, our first challenge was how to take the stone there. So we needed a loadout jetty. And the sea beach was so flat, so we needed at least half a kilometer long jetty. But uh, we saw some slides about the uh, coastal erosion and all. That was our big concern, that okay, if we build a loadout jetty here, so there will be erosion in the sea coast. So we requested Professor Sarnasiraj, please come and advise what to do. And he, I think, I remember, he came at 7.30 in the morning one day. And uh, we were all there, so just he took it all and gave us a beautiful uh, solution in next three, four days. And we are fortunate. 
it's still working. So these are the kind of expectation I, I would say from industry uh, we have and we are also getting these advices. So whenever there's a problem, okay, call up IIT. So they are there, they are our family doctors. And uh, like this, I, I think we'll be continue to do that for years, many years now. And one last request again uh, I have. Uh, there are so many courses, graduation, post-graduation, but we don't find any of the students interested in coming to the construction field. Okay, they go to the design, yes. If there is any way we can motivate them, uh, of course, salary, other things are constraints, but if we don't get brilliant people, educated people in the construction, how we improve? So maybe we'll have to find some way, maybe we'll have to have some uh, collective effort to do that, to bring in better brains, smarter people to the construction. Because ultimately, whatever is the design, whatever is the solution, somebody has to build it. So here, my colleagues from LNT, Navajuga, ISDL, they are here. So they also, I think, face similar problems, similar challenges. So I, I would just try to make it a point that maybe in, your, in the future years, something can be worked out for, in, for the sake of the industry. So that's all uh, from my side. Thank you again for giving us and giving me the opportunity to speak here. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, Mr. Nandi. And uh, I next invite uh, Sri Rakesh Kuntia, GM, ISDPL. Uh, good morning, professors, uh, colleagues from industry, and the students. Uh, first of all, let me confess that uh, I'm not an alumni from uh, IIT, unlike uh, many of you. Uh, but I don't feel intimidated. Uh, because uh, I heard uh, this morning that IIT brings uh, unlike-minded people. And I think I like that. Because I think this is a perfect platform where uh, IIT is trying to do many things, trying to bring uh, various industry, various startups, Etc. and trying to see that, you know, how everyone can excel in their field of knowledge and wisdom. Uh, I'll go in a bit different order. Uh, first of all, also, I liked uh, some of uh, the way Mr. Nandi narrated a few things. I think you are a born storyteller, which is uh, nice, uh, which is nice, very nice. Uh, I must tell to the students that, uh, okay, design, banking, or IIM is fine. But I think you, the most fun you have is in the construction. I can assure you that. I mean, uh, the satisfying experience that uh, we have in the projects, that's really unmatchable. Uh, I, I have been working in the head office for the last 10 years. Before that, I was uh, in projects doing as an engineer, uh, works manager, project manager, so on and so forth. Even today also, whenever I go to the sites, my wife tells you that, you know, yeah, you see a different glow in your face, even today whenever I go to the site. Sites are uh, interesting, challenging, it's fun, it's fun. Uh, and I think salary will not be a challenge in the days to come. I'm sure every company is uh, coming up, they know that, you know, I mean, uh, you have to match the industry and uh, they, that's it. Now, coming back to uh, the subject of industry meeting the ocean. Uh, first of all, thanks to IIT, uh, okay, we are, uh, I don't know, I, I didn't introduce myself. Uh, I am Rakesh. Uh, I work for uh, International Seaport Dredging, which is a part of Deme Group, uh, which is a Belgian company, of course. Uh, as you know, there are four major dredging companies in the world, uh, and it is one of them. Uh, so we are pioneer uh, in the dredging industry. We possess the largest cutter suction dredger in the world, if some of you are... Uh, known to go what is a dredger or what is a cutter section dredger what is, or what is a um, uh, trailing suction hopper dredger. Uh, we also, um, uh, we are the pioneer in uh, offshore wind energy. Today I heard about IIT taking up some uh, uh, 
uh, initiatives in offshore wind, wind so that uh, drew my attention because we are the world leader in offshore wind energy. Uh, so that's something uh, I, I know that in India the still the tender for offshore wind uh, is yet to come. Probably it will happen in the uh, next few months or uh, latest by end of this year. So that's something you know we are keeping an uh, tab on this and probably we'll uh, look into that if it's interesting. Uh, I want to tell you uh, something that since IIT has taken a leadership role in cons giving consultancy to all the ports, we see a big change. We really see a paradigm change uh, what is happening in the, port, in the ports. Uh, you see that there is quality soil investigation being taken, uh, taken place. Uh, you see in the various survey, uh, be it bathymetry, be it uh, geophysical, you see a big difference. Uh, not only that, whenever there is a problem, uh, you, you see that IIT is there proactively, they are solving it, and they are not scared to solve any problem, because previously otherwise nobody would take a decision. Uh, in the ports, they will look at each other, and probably they will shift the problem to uh, arbitrations or for something else. You know that you know, dredges are very exp expensive, extremely expensive equipment. But uh, per day, uh, ideal charges is costing, uh, costing uh, almost half a crore or something like that. But when uh, you know, people do not take decisions, you know, it really jeopardizes the industry. And thanks to IIT, uh, lot, you see a big change. I'll not go into the details. At the same time, again, because uh, I believe that I have a bit of an unlike mind, I would not uh, tell all Roji things about IIT or the engineering department. Probably I would challenge you or motivate you or inspire you that uh, you do not uh, help the industry when industry comes to, comes to you only. Like I heard Mr. Nandi or uh, Atijo or everyone that they have these big problems and they come to you and you solve it as family doctors. Fantastic. But as especially when it comes to dredging, when it's a new field for many, uh, many people. It's a field of, uh, it's a uh, field which involves a lot of different technology. You work in the ocean. Uh, I heard about constructability from Mr. Nandi and uh, Tijo. Uh, we, uh, okay, we have issue of dredgeability, but also we are confronted with something called workability, where, you know, your dredger, ca can it stand and work with the effect of uh, swell and uh, wave? Uh, and those uh, and many 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 such things. I mean, you know that rock dredging is uh, a big challenge. It's not everyone's cup of tea, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. My invitation to uh, IIT or ocean engineering will be that probably you reach out to the industry, meet them uh, uh, from time to time. Let's have uh, talks together uh, and share knowledge, share experience. Uh, visit dredges. I know that you know today. Uh, some of your colleagues are on board uh, dredger, monitoring everything very closely and giving feedback. I think that's very important, very important. You cannot acquire those kind of knowledge unless you are there uh, and having regular feedback. Uh, so I found it very interesting when I heard from my colleagues that people from IIT are there on board dredger continuously. I'm sure in two, three years' time, you would have developed a database which will help you in... I was very impressed to see what you did for the Kolkata port. Uh, it's very impressive to see that, you know, how by such optimization you can save 200 crores per year or so. I'm sure in the next couple of years you will do that in many major ports when it comes to capital dredging, rock dredging, so on and so forth. Uh, I think more or less uh, that. Uh, but yeah, I also would invite uh, if more students can come to the industry, probably internship or uh, visits, uh, so on and so forth. But I think we have to make it very interactive. We have to make it a bit more fun than uh, today, where uh, sometimes also some of us are a bit scared whether I should uh, call uh, IIT or not, not to Professor Murali or somebody. He's very open, or Dr. Sigane is uh, same. Uh, but I think we have to keep this atmosphere uh, that, yeah, you can talk to each other. Uh, no, I mean, we are talking for we are talking about a knowledge, knowledge sharing. Uh, we are talking about engineering, so we shouldn't be scared of anything. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much uh, for allowing me to speak here for a few minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Sri Rakesh, and um, thanks to your point. Uh, 
in, in fact, uh, all the challenging projects. And we took some of the aspects, key aspects, to take to the research problem. We address it separately. Say even that uh, one of the dredging one, a novel solution under the port center and research project scheme, it was, it was executed, not like uh, just from industry requirement, but uh, we also take it up to challenging research work. Thank you for your, that particular point. Next, I invite Mr. Vijay Raj from Afghans. Uh, good afternoon, uh, all uh, professors and uh, fellow industry uh, colleagues. Uh, it is a very uh, great pleasure uh, to be part of this event. Uh, and it is needless to mention that uh, any project, any ocean project or any marine project, marine structures is complete without IIT ocean engineering. And either uh, they're uh, involved in uh, either as a uh, PMC or a employer consultant or a third party reviewer. So in any way they are involving in any of all the ocean projects. Uh, all the uh, contractors or the design consultants, they are all involved in all projects. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, when we approach uh, to ocean engineering with the very uh, complex problems, uh, we go we go out with a very uh, workable and uh, cost-effective solutions. Uh, thank you once again, and uh, wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ziraj. I request, uh, I invite Mr. Krishnan from IMC group. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm a bit surprised because I was not included in the list earlier. But anyway, my association with IIT Madras uh, has been the last two years, mainly with uh, Dr. Murli. Uh, he has been a source of great inspiration in our studies. We did a study on the Calcutta Dock Channel with him, a very successful <coughs> study, I must say. We are using the results of that study in our project, and we hope to realize benefits <coughs> from them. And IMC Group, incidentally, is an oil and gas terminaling company. We have terminals all over India. And our <coughs> company has been associated with IIT Madras, the other uh, departments, for several, several years. Uh, we hope the relationship will continue for mutual gain. Thank you very much. So, in fact, we wanted all the invitees to speak, but time is not sure. So, the last... I invite uh, Mr. Srinivas from Navayuga to provide the feedback. Yeah, good afternoon uh, to all dignitaries and my colleagues. I'm very grateful uh, to be on this platform uh, for a small speech at least, by, uh, as I was invited on in the last moment. Uh, way back in, I'm, I'm from Navayuga Engineering Company, so we have started our first marine uh, division right from 1988. The first uh, of its kind, like a small company has uh, taken over uh, the Vishakapatnam marine structures. Uh, and that time I remember when we were only kids. Uh, Mr. Sundar Vadiwale, sir, has got involved in uh, many of our projects for uh, taking up the EPC contract sort of basis, and we were successful in it. And till now, the Ocean Engineering Department and the complete IIT's uh, Structural Engineering Division also are involved, and we approach them for each and every part. Like presently, the biggest ship 
uh, ship lift project which is going, which is happening in uh, Vishakhapatnam. It's uh, to the tune of 30,000 tons as to be the lifting capacity in which uh, Veluser is involved uh, for the proof checking. And uh, Professor Nalle Rasu sir is involved in, uh, in our uh, shore production works and for the breakwater projects. So I'm very thankful and I, I really, as my other colleagues have said, the students nowadays, like we, feel we, we are very short of uh, uh, the students coming from IIT, like I know, except for LNT has got few of IIT uh, engineers, but uh, none of our, our, our type of companies have got IIT students with us. So I request the professors to uh, give a boosting to the IIT uh, the students and at least they can come for uh, a training purposes or you know uh, some apprentice or as you said some other words like you can just uh, engage for 15 days 20 days they'll they'll create some interest in uh, in the projects the variety of the projects when i was a student like of course i'm a student from a normal uh, sv university tirupati but when i joined the uh, organization so i was just uh, said you go into the water and there is a gantry doing the pile. So I don't know what is gantry and other things. <laughs> so that sort of things used to happen. And with this 33 years of experience, so now we can say like, you know, I'm, I'm ready to take any of the challenges. And I, I will tell you the IIT is like, you go with, a, with, with your issues or you give some, uh, some project to IIT and there is a solution. So that's all I need to say. Thanks for that. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you, Mr. Srinivas. And uh, in fact, uh, many of our students that nowadays are re um, ready to go for industry, even for construction projects, or my PG students. So we would be happy to organize special interview sessions in our campus itself if you are key to take our IIT students, both UG and PG or even masters by research scholars. So you are welcome. So I think uh, we will conclude the industry feedback talks with this. I request uh, Professor Elias to uh, tell about the further day events. Thank you. Okay. Thank you for, uh, you know, the nice feedback that we received from uh, all the uh, industry partners. We had two feedback, uh, one from ITD, other one from Navyuga, uh, basically on uh, how to get IIT graduates to your organization. See, I need to tell you one uh, example. Though I am not a B.Tech graduate from IIT, I am from another engineering college, but I did M.Tech here and uh, went for various uh, jobs outside, inside, and then finally returned back to Chennai. You know, while I had an appointment order with IIT Madras, I was called by LNT CEO to join their company. Then I went and had a meeting with him. In fact, my family also came with me to Bangalore. They offered a salary, which is uh, less than 5% of what I was receiving in the offshore industry. So I told him, you won't get me you won't even get a junior engineer for the salary that you are offering in 2006. Because the, the people have a different perception of ocean engineering, offshore engineering. Uh, that kind of salary has not, you know, happened here, but elsewhere is available. So graduates from IIT definitely will look for everyone. Everyone is a human. So they will look for a better salary job. Then I told him that you won't get me, you won't get even a junior engineer. So he asked what? can be done. And that's exactly what I told him. You have to nurture your own people, train, and then continue to keep them with a good salary. So that's how we started one user-oriented program only for LNT. Every year we used to train 10 to 20 students, and then they used to go back. About seven years we run that program. 200 graduates we produce from the department. Of, of course, out of 200, you know, 100 left over, remaining has gone somewhere else after five years of uh, that so-called. So that is how the industry has to develop the manpower. You can't depend on, uh, you know, graduates from IIT only.
So I still propose if the port industry or construction industry is looking for, we can always run a user-oriented program. But nowadays, one great advantage, our director has given permission, the Senate has approved, uh, a remote MTech program, web-enabled. So you can learn from, you can learn from your own place. We will run to continue to teach from here. And uh, with a few interactions, you will learn the, you know, the whole process with a degree. And you continue to work in your organization. Such a provision is there. So probably we will send that uh, proposal to the organization so that you can, uh, you know, uh, one, one thing is you may reduce your uh, consultancy given to IIT because we are training your, uh, we are going to train. And that's a good trend to happen. You know, you cannot have everything uh, done in one place. You know, we need to spread the knowledge to other uh, organizations so that, you know, everybody gains from there. So that with that, I would conclude. Uh, hopefully it may happen soon if some of the organizations are uh, interested in it. Uh, afternoon session uh, is basically those who are interested to come to the department. We have a vehicle ar arranged. We'll go and show you how the facilities are running even after 45, 50 years. We have been doing maintenance. So 1.15 we have a lunch and then 2.30 the buses will be ready, cars will be ready, whichever is preferred. You can come there. We have uh, so around the department. And then uh, we have uh, 3 o'clock meeting with our uh, uh, teachers and uh, retired faculty, and then we'll con conclude the day with that. Thank you very much. So the lunch is ready. I think 1.15 they said ready. We can go for lunch. And I, again, once again, I would like to thank all of you for coming and, uh, you know, in a grand way to celebrate this event. Thank you very much.